There are a ton of systems on our satellite. Propulsion, gyro, LC Tweetas, SATAs, aux boards, motor controllers, and all of that is controlled by one mysterious box, the avionics box. Actually, it's not that mysterious. It's just this one box. But inside this box, there's some insane engineering. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how we design, test, and build our avionics system at Astronus. Avionics as a field of engineering is kind of a wide ranging term. Uh, the term actually comes from aviation electronics. Avionics is sort of very generally the telemetry system. For us, it's our satellite, but it's also used in airplanes and rockets. On the Apollo missions, the avionics system was at the core of the satellite. It was designed to be robust and it enabled us to land on the moon. And the space shuttle also had an avionics system. It had five computers that worked redundantly. Hubble also has an avionics system that allows it to do its high precision pointing, which is really important for a telescope of its budget and size. The avionics box is sort of like the central nervous system of the satellite. You know, in the context of Astratus and our microgeo satellites, we kind of have our hand in a lot of different places in the satellite. We've got radios, we've got a power box, we've got reaction wheels, solar arrays, the drivers for the solar arrays, we've got a thermal system. Power distribution across the entire satellite, which things we want to have turned on, which things we want to have turned off. Communicates with star trackers, sun sensors, and flight computer, which is the main processing unit in the satellite, which then takes those messages, it interprets them and then it decides what to do next with those messages and sends it back out through the box. All of the systems are going to have to integrate through the flight computer and the other boxes that control the systems of the vehicle. These are all necessary for ensuring that we can complete our mission, deploy our payload. Designing a new system, you do kind of have to start with the requirements. The avionics system is very multifunctional in that different parts of the satellite ultimately use it. So there are different, I guess, internal customers with, with the satellite. It's not just about thinking what's best for my team, what's easiest for my team. We're sort of a hub of a bunch of different teams thinking what's easiest for engineers on other teams, what's best for the systems that aren't just avionics. It's really important for us to understand how these parts are communicating with us and, and what is the goal of that system, that subsystem that we're working on. We, we meet with almost every single team in the company and try to get an idea of what this hardware is, what it does, what information we need to ingest and how we need to do it. A lot of the time it just starts with conversations between different teams. I think on the avionics team, we're all kind of social people we're big on, if there's a question, just go ask them. Iterative conversations with people, can you do this? Can you make this work? And over time, you sort of narrow in on a uh, design that works for everybody. So some of the considerations of building for the avionics system at Astronauts is everything has to be reliable. And uh, to do that, we have redundancy. You can't really go up into space and fix a part if it's broken. We have cold spares, which means there's an actual like second set of something that's powered off. But if there's a problem with the primary set, it will swap over to this redundant set. Our entire satellite experiences uh, different levels of stresses thermal stresses, radiation stresses. Problem solving comes in is like, how are we gonna create a robust system to survive those, those different environmental stresses? So this is the bus lab. Half of it is power and the other half is the avionics section. This is where the magic happens. We have a lot of hardware in here strewn across all of our benches. This is, this is her. This is uh, the Qual Avionics box that we have. We say it kind of looks like a beaver with its tail, which is like a power system over there. As you can see, it just has like a ton of connectors on it because it talks to everything on the satellite. We're not just thinking about robustness and cost, we're thinking about ease of assembly. We're planning on building 24 of these a year. We're looking out for our production team. We're trying to limit the number of components in each box. We're trying to make sure that when these are assembled, there's less risk of anything going wrong. Uh, so I work on the printed circuit board layout team, basically taking all of the top level architecture and board designs from the electric engineers and converting that into a buildable circuit board. 
something that we can manufacture and fit in a box and integrate into the full system. There's a lot of complex circuits that we have to design in order to meet our design goals. Thermal dissipation, they're thinking about signal integrity, power integrity. These are all things that are gonna work into the layout of the board, the composition, the materials, the shape. I'm looking basically for different components that are tombstone, for example. From the layout engineer perspective, check on that everything's populated basically. Because our systems are so complicated and we really need to make sure they're reliable, we test everything so much. That's why we have all of these test racks here. What is that? This, this is a disco rack. We name all of our racks. This one is actually not called disco rack. No, this one is just motor controller test bed three. <laughs> these ones are fun. This guy here is train rack. This guy here is velocirack. And this guy here, this guy is disco rack. So lots of satellites means lots of boards, means lots of testing. So this really optimizes our test flow and making sure all of our test code runs and is as fight-like as we can get it to make sure that, you know, any, any future boards that we're doing tests on will be okay to use on our satellites. A lot of wires. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of harnesses. This is the spaghetti monster of harnesses that we have. This is another spaghetti monster of harnesses that we have. These are war harnesses, and it's all for testing. We're trying to exercise all of the circuit paths of our hardware. If we have a communication link, we have what we call eGSE boards, which emulate the hardware that we would be talking to or turning on. For example, we have power loads, so we can emulate a subsystem that we're turning on and we're using. With our box, we turn things on, we turn things off, we communicate over them, and we just validate that all of those circuit paths are working. I personally like working on avionics because, you know, I'm an electrical engineer at my core. That's what I do my day to day. But I get to work with our GNC team. I get to work with our thermal team. And I get exposed to a lot of different problems. And I help people solve that. My flight computer interacts with the thruster, so I get to work with them. And I guess I like how robust my job is and the types of tasks I do every day are. I love working on avionics and in this type of system because I like the complexity of having to touch every part of the satellite. It really allows you to get this huge breadth and depth into everything that the satellite does. You know, you get to work with digital systems, analog systems, power systems. You know, we, we learn a lot about like what other systems, other subsystems on a satellite will do. I think the big thing is Astronus is very fast paced. We're still a startup, we're still young. I've gotten to have a lot of responsibility in my projects, even as an intern last summer. Some of my previous internships felt much more, you know, running coffee or doing spreadsheets. And that's definitely not true here. I think if you ask a lot of our team members about how the satellite works and functions, the avionics team would know better than most other teams about the intricacies of the entire thing as a system. So it's really a field where you can learn so much and get a really good understanding of the system while also working on some really difficult and challenging electronics and, and it's really fun. <laughs>